Dear students, Fundamental Theorem of Algebra Statement of a Fundamental Theorem of Algebra If P of Z is a non-constant polynomial, then there is a complex number A with P of A equal to 0. Fundamental Theorem of Algebra is a very familiar and very famous also very important theorem. That is, the theorem states that Every non-constant polynomial has a zero or as a root. Otherwise, it can be stated as every non-constant polynomial has at least one zero or at least one root in the set of all complex numbers. For this, we consider a polynomial P of Z with a degree greater than or equal to 1 because P of Z is a non-constant. Therefore, the degree should be greater than or equal to 1. We have to show that there exists at least one A in C such that P of A equal to 0. We use the method of contradiction. So, we suppose that P of Z never equal to 0 for every Z in C. That is, there does not exist a point A such that P of A equal to 0. That is P of Z not equal to 0 for every Z belongs to C. Then we consider a function 1 by P of Z. The reciprocal of P of Z say it as F of Z. So this F of Z is analytic except at P of Z equal to 0. But we suppose that P of Z never equal to 0. That implies F of Z is analytic everywhere. That is F of Z is entire function. And also, we consider the limit of uh, P of Z as Z, Z tends to infinity. We know that P of Z is a polynomial and it is a non, not constant. Those, therefore, P of Z is of the form some A0 plus A1Z plus A2Z plus etc. Some ANZ raised to n if the degree of uh, P of Z is n. So, as Z tends to infinity, this P of Z tends to infinity also. Therefore, 1 by P of Z, that is F of Z, that's limit tending to 0. That is, as Z tends to infinity, F of Z tends to 0. Now, we consider two cases. That is, we divide the entire complex plane with respect to a circle, mod Z equal to R. That is, center 0 and radius capital R. That is, first portion is outside the circle, that is mod Z greater than R. And second portion is inside and on the circle, that is mod Z less than or equal to R. So, using these two sections, we can consider the whole complex plane. So, the whole complex plane is divided into two portions with respect to this circle with the center 0, 0 and radius capital R. First, we consider the case. We take all Z such that, this is case 1, we take all Z such that mod Z greater than R, where R is a positive real number. In this case, we have Z, the point Z, with, uh, their modulus is greater than capital R. Then we can also, we have the result limit Z tends to infinity F of Z equal to 0. So, we can write the modulus of f of z less than 1. How? How it can write? That is, limit z tends to infinity f of z equal to 0. That is, as the value of z tending to larger and larger values, that is, it tends to infinity, then the value of f of z closes to 0. That is, as z is bigger, then f of z is tending to 0. So, we can always state that the value of f of z is smaller is some number which is less than or less than 1 or less than or equal to 1. Okay. So, we get a mod f of z less than 1. Now, we consider the second case that is we take z such that mod z modulus of z less than or equal to r that is interior to and on the circle with center 0 0 and radius r that is 
weak closure of zero r closed disk with the center zero and radius r in this portion we know that f of z is entire function that is it is analytic everywhere that means it is continuous everywhere so it is continuous also in the disk closed disk mod z less than or equal to r so a function continuous means it is defined all of its points so we can find at each point we can find value of f of z for each set therefore we can find a maximum value that is for each value we get a finite a number or a finite value then we can find the maximum so we can write f of z mod f of z less than or equal to m there exists such an m natural such a real number m so in these two cases first case we get mod f of z less than 1 and second case we get mod f of z less than or equal to m for some real number m in two cases f of z is bounded the function f of z is bounded we already take that f of z is entire so entire and bounded then by Liouville's theorem f of z become a constant f of z constant means 1 by p of z is constant 1 is already a constant that should be p of z is constant but in the statement of the theorem and in our supposition p of z is a non-constant polynomial so this is a contradiction why we get a contradiction that is our assumption is wrong that is we assumed that p of z has no zero never zero so it is wrong that is there exists at least one point a such that p of a equal to zero so that is the fundamental theorem of algebra next we have a corollary of uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra if p of z is a polynomial and a1, a2, etc., am are its zeros with aj having multiplicity kj, then p of z equal to c into z minus a1 into k1, z minus a2 into k2, into etc., into z minus am into km for some constant c and k1 plus k2 plus etc. plus km is the degree of a polynomial p. This is a famous corollary of fundamental theorem of algebra. That is, if a polynomial has zero, some zeros with the multiplicity, then that polynomial can be expressed in terms of uh, that zeros and their multiplicity. So, we have, we consider a polynomial P of Z, which is non-constant. That is, its degree is greater than or equal to 1. And we consider a1, a2, etc., am, the, the zeros of p of z with the multiplicities, multiplicities k1, k2, etc., km. We take p of z as p of z equal to some a0 plus a1 plus, sorry, a1z plus a2z square plus, etc., plus anz raised to, where an not equal to 0 because the degree of the polynomial is degree of p of z is n now by the fundamental theorem of algebra p of z is non-constant then there exists at least one zero in c we take it as a1 that is a1 is a zero of p of z with the multiplicity k1 therefore p of z can be written as p of z equal to z minus a1 into k1 into p1 of z this is by factor theorem where p1 of z is analytic and p1 of a1 not equal to 0 and degree of p1 of z equal to total degree is n so degree of p1 of z equal to n minus k1 then again we are playing the fundamental theorem of algebra for p1 of z because p1 of z is a also a polynomial it is non-constant if it is a constant then the proof is over here 
we get the form as z minus a1 raised to k1 into c. Now, and this multiplicity k1 equal to n itself. So, we consider k1 not equal to n, then we get a p of z equal to z minus a1 or raised to k1 into p1 of z. And apply, now apply the fundamental theorem of algebra for, for p1 of z. So, we get p of z equal to z minus a a1 all raised to k1 into p1 of z can be written as suppose that it has a 0 uh, as the name a2 with the multiplicity k2 then we get z minus a2 raised to k2 into some p3 of z where p3 of z is a non-constant polynomial where p3 of sorry some p2 p1 p2 p2 of z p2 of a1 not equal to 0 and p2 of a2 not equal to 0 and degree of p2 degree of p2 can be written as n minus k1 plus k2 now continuing like this next we get a p3 p4 etc and at last we can write p of z equal to z minus a1 raised to k1 z minus a2 raised to k2 etc z minus am raised to km into some c where c is a constant that is degree of c equal to 0 is a constant also that's equal to n minus k1 plus k2 plus etc plus km that implies n equal to k1 plus k2 plus etc plus km that is the n is the degree of p of z that is degree of p of z equal to k1 plus k2 plus etc plus k so that is the corollary of fundamental theorem of algebra thank you